Okay, so this is going to be a bit strange and out of order with my video because it took me close to two months to get this to work. Um, what I did was I started with, I bought a Jensen Nano Orin 8GB, which is this one here. It has um, 67 tops of AI performance, um, which is this guy here. This is obviously the final iteration of what I've tried to do. Um, but let's just start with looking at this. So this is the one I bought. It was my first attempt at having some fun with just my own projects with AI. Um, as you know, if you've seen some of my other videos, I play around with the Raspberry Pis. Um, I had quite a lot of fun with this little guy just playing with LMMs. Um, and what I did find was I did kind of get stuck between the 8 gigabyte and running out of RAM um, with all the AI stuff. So as you know me, I <laughs> went and did a little modification or hack. And like my other video, I was really determined not to end up with a Raspberry Pi 5 that was kind of dead, um, which I will get back to that Raspberry Pi 5 and hopefully have it all sorted. But basically what I did was I ran out of RAM with this and they have quite a range of things here. You can see that they're all they're very similar and obviously different um, RAM different sizes of RAM chips and you know a few different speeds and whatnot but basically what I did was I removed the 8 gigabyte RAM and me 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 I doubled it and installed um, 16 gigabytes of RAM and the following videos I will basically show you how I did that and how I got it to work but basically this here is the Orin NX 16 gigabyte this is the one I bought uh, the one underneath is the Nano Orin uh, 8 gigabyte which I modded to 16 gigabytes and as you can see here this is the UART um, connected in there uh, basically I use that just to to communicate to the board and to do a lot of the debugging when I first replaced the RAM chips and obviously it did boot so to know what was going on and to know what the errors were um, these two wires coming out here actually connected to the I2C bus which is communicating to the EE prom and I needed that to kind of um, change the identification of the board um, and basically if we go back to so this here is the JTOP so this one here is the Orin NX 16 gigabytes and as you can see if we go back to this one here this is the Orin NX 16 gigabytes, it is, this is the speed of the GPU. Um, that's the GPU there. And as you can see, yeah, this is the CPU, eight cores, um, and the speed of the GPU. So keep that in mind. We're going back out. So yeah, you can see these are the cores, um, the model, let's tell you the model here. And we go back to memory. Yeah, you can see the memory, the amount of memory, total memory. You've got all the little uh, ZRAM, which is your fake little, um, basically like your swap files. Um, so you can see that I have 23 gigabytes of swap files. Now there's that here, that there. So all oh, that's all nice, lovely. Now my hacked nano or an eight gigabyte. So as you can see here, so as you can see here, this is the hacked one. And if you look here, first thing you notice that there are only six cores. Um, these are all offline, assuming that it doesn't actually have these sensors installed. Uh, we come to the GPU, this all seems very much the same. CPU, there's only six cores. Memory, we are now reading a full 16 gigabytes. Has the same thing here with ZRAM. I have the same swap file, same size. So we have 23 points the six cores because that's all the or nano eight gigabyte has is a six core. Um, and I did do a Geekbench test, which I'll run and get back to you with, uh, with the results and show you that single core um, is very similar, which makes sense. Multi core, uh, obviously, the NX is far better, um, but everything else, yeah, it's, it's quite good. So, quite excited about all that. So, this is a Jetson Nano Orin 8 gigabyte. This is the CPU and GPU. This is the RAM chip. This is the other RAM chip. This is the 8 gig version, so this is a 4 gigabyte RAM. That is a other 4 gigabyte RAM total equals 8 gigabytes. Here I have Micron. And this is eight gigabyte. And this is another eight gigabyte. Total sixteen gigabytes. Looking online, it looks like this CPU and GPU maximum bandwidth memory control can handle up to sixteen gigabytes. So, plan is, as you know, what we've done with our Raspberry Pi is to install the new RAM chips. Now I've had a look. There is a slight possibility that the firmware will lock up because of the timings. Um, however, my plan is, if that is the case, that we will either spoof the board and get it to think that it is the NX version, which is the sixteen gigabyte one and see if we can flash the firmware that way and get it to use those 16 gigabyte timings. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to replace both RAM chips and go from there. Obviously, this is a very expensive thing, so I'm going to go very, very slowly. Um, because if it doesn't work, then I'm going to have to obviously reball the old, those old ones and um, replace them. We'll put it back where this little guy here has already got the balls there, so as you can see, really nicely done. Um, a little bit different when I was doing the pies. I didn't have this little guy here, so this guy here will hopefully supply constant heat to the bottom to keep the board warm. Um, I don't really intend to replace it using this guy um, because I've never really done that with so many tiny little components. So I'm kind of freak out if, um, if I had to do such a thing in terms of, yeah, I would hate to think of one of these tiny little capacitors just happened to move out alignment. I would have no idea. And then trying to fault find it would just be out of control. So I think I'll just use it to supply it in a hundred degrees or 120 degrees just to keep the board warm. So I don't have to place so much heat from the potty gun and risk burning it. So a little bit of this one, I found that when using these clamps I had before to hold the board down, there's, just, there's a lot of tension up there. And what it did was actually cause the PCB of the board to warp. 
and it warped that much that during the last reflow on the other side, the balls wouldn't actually touch because it was warped so much. Um, so I had to flip it around and then apply heat slowly with applying the pressure to get the board to bend back into shape. Anyway, um, I connected the UART to my um, carrier board and I was doing some debugging. Now it doesn't boot up, so what I had was I had the, this is an 8 gig um, model of the Orion Nano. So there's 4 gig here, 4 gig there. I replaced that with an 8 gig one, I left the 4 gig, booted it up. It wouldn't boot up because it was saying that there was a mismatch of memory. So I've just completed the second RAM chip and I'm just doing the final inspection of the board. Uh, came up pretty good the second time, didn't warp the board, which is good. Uh, got a bit of glue stuck on there when I removed the tape. But just doing the inspection of the, the balls, they're all looking pretty good, which I'm quite happy with. Okay, this is a quick update on the little Jetson Nano or an 8GB, 16GB RAM hack. So I've installed two new RAMs, and I have been spending oof, close to about two weeks, as you can see, with this whole ChatGPT project on trying to help me hack this thing. And I think I've just got a win, basically, with trying to flash... So it wouldn't boot up, right? The, the boot up would fail, and you'd get these um, an alias check fail, saying that the SRAM was wrong. And when I would use the SDK um, program, it would also come up with a CRC fault basically saying that the was a miscompare. And so what I've, and I didn't have known that before because I was just getting like this, um, this other fault called something else in the bootloader using the, um, I connected to the other UART connectors. So just reading that log, it would just basically say, yeah, boot failed due to basically s -RAM mismatch, which is understandable. Uh, it was only when I used the SDK that it gave me more information saying that it was a CRC fail. And the CRC was basically saying that the EEPROM was not matching from its calculated and its stored value. And when I initially connected to the I2C bus here, Oh, ChatGPT was telling me that I needed to do an SVD dump of to get the timing parameters to make my own timing config. And I think when I did that, I actually accidentally wrote one thing and it completely messed it up. So now what I've done is I've, you can actually see that I can, I've directly flashed the, not flashed, but I've connected to the actual um, bus, I do see bus here, which is 50, which is where when you look on over here, that the EEPROM lives on that address. So I've successfully connected to it. And then I got ChatGPT to write me a, Python script to um, basically, I took a dump of the original one, I got in to decode it, and then it would tell me, you know, you would decode it and you would see what the CRC currently is, and you would see the fault that it was saying that it was calculated at whatever it was, 7F, and the hexadecimal code, and it was actually stored at FF. So I don't know if I accidentally, when I thought what I was doing was connected to the RAM chips, I was actually just programming the EEPROM. So now what I've done is I've got him to write that Python script over here, where he would modify the he would modify the part number. So I decided to change the part number from this is my logic, which is 8 gigabyte, to the NX um, or 16 gigabyte. So what my hope is that I've, if the software uses the EEPROM and not the fused chip for its identification, then it might be easier for me just to get the NX um, part number timing configs to then flash that. So I've done two things. I've corrected the CRC um, fault, so it matches, and I've changed the part number to the 00. zero. Um, was a bit painful. So once he made that new bin folder, bin file, sorry, I couldn't just upload it. Um, just because I, I don't really know how to use the bus pirate that well. So what I did was I got Mr. ChatGPT to put it in this, put all the commands are down here. And then I found that I could copy and paste up to 12 lines. And then I just slowly copy and pasted um, 12 blocks at a time. And there was the little output. And as you can see there, that was the CRC faults now fixed to 7F instead of FF. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Boot it up, disconnect everything, I'll leave these two ones connected, um, and see if I can get the SDK program from NVIDIA to actually read, there's this bloody thing, to see if it actually will read the, see it as a 16 gigabyte and actually try and flash it as a 16 gigabyte. I'm not sure what they'll, it might soft brick the, um, the CPU because it's a different CPU, but I'm just going to plug it in and see what it actually does. Because initially when I tried to flash just my original one, my 8 gigabyte, I still have the same failure of the CRC. So, I'll pause here, I'll get back here. Okay, so I've just removed the jumper cable from my carrier board, which puts it into, which before it was in um, recovery mode. So I'm just going to, just out of curiosity, after I've flashed the EEPROM, I've connected up to UART and see what I get when I connect it. Right, so it's still the same thing. So as you can see here, yeah, SRAM alias check, we're still in the same fault code. I was just curious to see if there was any other indication about oh, if the board had changed. If there was any indication of the board had changed name which doesn't really look like it. I'm just kind of going off memory because I've seen this log so many times I've spent literally two weeks staring at this thing. All right, to me again, this has been oof, 
almost a month and a bit since my last video. This again is the Jetson Nano Orin 8GB, which I've modified with the 16GB chips. So before it was 4GB, 4GB made a total of 8, now it's 8GB, 8GB total of 16. So the past month I've been using, um, if you guys have followed me before, you know I'm not very good with the software side of things, so I've been using ChatGPT to help me hack this thing and figure out what I need to do to make the, well my understanding from what ChatGPT was telling me that I need to fix the BCT um, the boot configuration tables to match the new SRAM because it kept failing with the alias checker. Alias checker was failing with the SRAM. Boot up, giving an error, um, saying basically that there was a mismatch, which makes sense because we had put a larger RAM than what was designed on the BCT tables. I'm not sure if any of that makes sense, but that's kind of where ChatGPT was leading me. Um, and during that process, it was for the last month, I was trying to get it to flash. So to basically use, as we know, that the NX board has 16 gigabytes, and for all intents and purposes, it's exactly the same. I used the same chips that they had used on those modules. I found through the flashing that the the actual chip, the actual Integra chip ID is the same. Um, but again, the, the manual flashing, I had the same issues. It ran into blocks or it just came up with that um, USB read, uh, USB write error that is quite common on these Jetsons. Um, and it was just last night that I managed to get it. Well, I don't even know, actually. I've just gone and bought this cable so I can actually read the UART out of the board. But see, so yeah, the same errors that I've run up to would be the uh, waiting for boot up and the boot up I would assume is because the board was failing during the flashing process it did the board reboots a couple of times and during the reboot it fails the alias checker so it never boots up so the flash can never finish um, and I was really just going around and around in circles and not having a full understanding really just using chat GPT I mean you can have a look here at all these um, all these chats and these chats you know when they're like trying to help me understand this um, problem I essentially got to the point where I just decided let's just try and do a flash so using the SDK program from NVIDIA, it would never work. I would never get it to flash. I'd run into CRC errors, basically saying that the config wasn't right. Um, and from my previous video, see these two wires, yeah, these two wires connect to the I2C bus, which is connected to the EE from where I used a reader to basically change the board identification from what this board is, which is, I think is the 005, the SKU005, which is the Orin Nano 8 gigabyte. And I changed it to 0000, which is the um, Orin Nano NX 16 gigabyte. Um, and because of that, I think I was running into errors with the SDK. Now, <laughs> the process of trying to rectify that, I just thought, I can't use the SDK because the SDK is too, it's too structured. It tries to prevent you from forcing a flashing into the wrong target hardware. Um, so I continued with the manual flashing. So I would basically, using those commands um, from ChatGPT and from just on the internet, see these ones here, you can just do a kernel flash. Um, and what I found is that when I did a flash using the real computer, um, pre-packed flash, it would work but still fail in the boot up. Using the one from the NVIDIA, from the Jetpack, it would it would just throw, it would throw errors, you wouldn't get past certain points. So what I ended up doing was doing a hybrid, was I basically run with the real, so start the flash process, but then I'd always throw an error saying it's missing something, it's missing something. Then I just, basically any file that was missing, I just searched for it in the, in the NVIDIA Jetpack and copied that file. And then after about the sixth time of doing that, I just end up copying everything out of the bootloader, out of the bootloader folder, um, out of the kernel and now the tools, and just copy everything across to this folder here. So the bootloader kernel and the tools essentially all have the same stuff. Um, ChatGPT also told me to make some empty files just to keep the process happy. And then the flash would basically get all the way to a point and it'll run into again that um, USB error, the USB read error, where it basically thinks something's wrong with the, the flashing process. Either power, USB cable, and whatnot. But I knew it wasn't the case because I've flashed Jetson boards before. I, I, I flashed this board initially with this laptop and the same setup. So, I just went back to the SDK, just because, and I thought, I'm kind of out of ideas, let me just try it. And anyway, I tried it, I flashed, and it completed the flash. And I knew something was different, because one, it completed the flash, one, it gave an error, the second, the, the fan would spin, and continue to spin. But there was no way of knowing what the boot up was. I was too scared to shut it down. Anyway, I accidentally shut it down, and restarted it, and it was still spinning. So now I've connected up to UART, and I'm wanting to find out what this thing shows. So I haven't actually turned on, so this is going to be the first four, both of us. Uh, my setup's a little bit hybrid because I'm at my partner's place. And yeah, I've been doing this for a couple of months now. I just take the board, try a few things, doesn't work. So here we go. So I'm gonna plug this in. Oh, look at that. So this is very usual, very normal that we see. Yeah, I've seen this all before. Or you can see it's got the latest Jetson pack. <laughs> I'm not sure how it passed the earliest check. So I really wonder if it's actually seeing the full 16 gigabytes or if it's just seeing the 8 gigabytes. Okay, so here is a UART read from the beginning of June. This is initially what would happen. It was a boot up, it would go through everything. I would see all these things here. And basically get down to the bottom. And this is what would happen. SRAM initialized, SRAM size total, um, uh, 20 million or something. And SRAM easy scrub, 
Fail check. Alias check every write mismatch. Boom, boom, boom. Now, we know the board is what it's slowly spinning. So now, I'll go back to the UI read now, look at this. So this seems all, I haven't had a really good look through this, but it seems mostly good. Um, SRAM initialize. So yeah, SRAM initialized. Total SRAM, look at that. 40 million, uh, what's that? Three, three, 400 million. And alias check, carve outs. There we go. So it looks like it's actually seeing the full, the full amount, which is remarkable because I don't actually know how I did that. Or if it was the case that the the SDK manager and the fact that I changed the the EEPROM, um, that it saw well because I changed the EEPROM SKU that it was like well it needs 16 gigabyte um, DTS or DTSI file, which are all these files that ChatGPT told me about. And said, yeah, you need the 16 gigabyte one, and flashed it with the 16 gigabyte one, and then the alias check passed because the alias checker, I'm assuming what it does, is it reads the RAM, and then makes sure that it's correct. Anyway, I am super excited because I've tried months to get this thing working. I'm curious to know how good it is. So I'm gonna go back to check. So as you can see here, I ran a Geekbench 6 um, test. Uh, so this is the real NX um, already, and single core. You got the score of the one uh, nine one four and four eight eight four for multi core. And this is the fake one, the modded one, and you can see the single core, slightly less, slightly less powerful CPU. Still says that it was uh, running at this speed, uh, doubt it. Um, but yeah, these are the figures all down here um, for the multi-core. So you can see, yeah, this is the modded one. Obviously it's going to be significantly less for the multi-core because you've actually got less cores than the original. Um, and yeah, you can see all this here, memory size, all these figures. So yeah, there you go. I successfully managed to modify a Nvidia Jetson Nano Orin 8 gigabyte and added 16 gigabytes and tricked it into thinking it was a Orin NX 16 gigabyte. Um, 